Good morning, all of you. In this session, I am going to explain about bolted joints. These are the examples for bolted joints. Before going to the introduction, first of all, you have to know the fundamentals about fasteners, fastening devices. A machine element used for holding or joining two or more parts. Two or more parts of a machine or structure is known as a fastener. Okay. A mission element used for holding, used for holding or joining two or more parts of a mission or structure is known as a fastener. Okay, the process of joining the parts is called fastening. Okay, the process of joining the parts is called fastening. The fasteners are of two types: permanent fasteners and removable or temporary fasteners. Okay, fasteners are broadly classified into permanent fasteners and temporary fasteners. Okay. Now, first of all, fasteners classified into permanent fasteners and temporary fasteners. Temporary fasteners are removable fasteners. Again, permanent fasteners. Uh, sorry. The following are the some examples for permanent fasteners. Welded joints, riveted joints, soldering, brazing. These four are the examples for permanent fasteners. Now the examples for temporary fasteners are screwed fasteners. Screwed fasteners uh, means bolted joints bolts nuts okay bolts and nuts are called screwed fasteners couplings shaft couplings uh, muff coupling split muff coupling flange couplings flexible couplings universal joints those are called couplings case sunk case saddle case woodruff case okay like that Quarter joints, sleeve and uh, spigot quarter joint, sorry, sleeve quarter joint, socket and spigot quarter joints, knuckle joints. Okay, those are uh, examples for quarter joints. Okay, these all are the some examples for uh, temporary fasteners. Riveting and welding process, riveting and welding, riveting, brazing soldering and welding process are used for fastening permanently okay screwed fasteners such as bolts studs nuts in combination with mission screws set screws case quarter joints shop couplings are used for fastening components that require frequent assembly and disassembly okay Screwed fasteners occupy the most prominent place among the removable fasteners. In general, screwed fasteners are used to hold parts together, to adjust parts with reference to each other, to transmit power from one shop to another shop. Okay, now this is the example for uh, welded joints. Okay, these all are the different types of welded joints. Okay, welded joints are also called permanent joints. Okay, here yeah, this one is the shape of a welding. This is a butt joint, this is a lap joint, this is a T joint, this is a corner joint, this is a edge joint. Okay, these all are examples for welded joints. Now this one also example for a welded joint. This one. This one also an example for welded joint. Now this one also example for welded joint. Okay, here you can observe this one also example for welding. Okay. Riveted joints. Riveted joints also a permanent fastener. Okay. 
where you can observe this is a rivet okay this is a rivet element okay rivets are used to join two or more plates this one also example for uh, riveted joints riveted joints widely used for uh, civil structures and boilers design okay these all are the examples for riveted joints here you can observe these all are rivets okay rivets are used to join two or more plates together this one also example for uh, civil structures okay these all are the riveted joints okay this one is the example for riveted joints now this one also example for uh, riveted joint riveted joints widely used for uh, design of uh, civil structures now this is the example for soldering soldering is used for uh, circuits for join the wires brazing this one is the example for a brazing here you can observe this one is a brazing okay brazing also used for join the, the two parts this one is a knuckle joint knuckle joint is a temporary fastener used to join two shafts okay these are the these are the parts used for uh, knuckle joint Okay, this is the example for a cotter joint, sleeve, sleeve type cotter joint. Okay, this is the disassemble view, this is the assemble view. Now, this is the example for coupling. Okay, coupling or sharp couplings are used to join two shafts. And also couplings are used to transmit power from one shaft to another shaft. These all are the examples for couplings, shaft couplings. Now here you can observe this coupling is used to join motor shaft and a pump, water pump shaft. Okay, and also couplings transmit power from one shaft to another shaft. now our topic today topic screwed fasteners or bolted joints okay a bolt and nut a bolt and nut in combination is a fastening device used to hold two parts together okay here you can observe this is a bolt this one is a bolt head this is a bolt shaft and this one is a nut okay bolt and nut combination is in combination is a fastening device used to hold two parts together okay these are the two parts for join for holding these two parts we are using bolts okay this is a bolt head this one is a nut this one is a body or shank these are the threads okay A bolt and nut in combination is a fastening device used to hold two parts together. The body of the bolt called shank. Okay, the body of the bolt is called shank. Shank is a cylindrical in form. The head 
the head square or a hexagonal in shape is formed by forging okay this is a head square or a hexagonal in shape screw threads these are the screw threads screw threads are cut on the other end of the shank nuts in general or square or hexagonal in shape okay this one is a nut nuts in general or square or hexagonal in shape here yeah, this one is the hexagonal nut this one is the square nut okay these are the two types of uh, nuts widely used for uh, mechanical applications the nuts with the internal threads engage with the corresponding size of the external threads of the bolt okay this is the bolt okay hexagonal headed bolt hexagonal headed bolt okay and this one is a shank or body in cylindrical shape now this is the square headed bolt okay so this one is a hexagonal headed bolt and this one is a hexagonal nut okay now this one is the square headed nut headed bolt and square headed nut okay however there are uh, other forms of nuts used to suit specific requirements for nuts hexagonal shape is uh, preferred to the square one as it is easy to tighten even in a limited space however square nuts are used when frequent loosening and tightening So these are the examples for uh, screwed fasteners. This one, these are called bolts and these are called nuts. These are the different uh, types of screws, mission screws, set screws. Here you can observe these all of the screws. Okay. These are the different types of uh, screw heads. This is the assembled view of a bolt, hexagonal headed bolt and nut. Okay. This is the application of uh, bolted joints in industrial purpose. Yeah. These are the bolted joints. These, uh, these bolted joints are used to join two pipes. Okay. And also here, this is the example for shaft coupling. Okay. To join two flanges of the coupling, we are using bolts and nuts. Now this is the example of a civil structure. For design of a civil structures, we are using riveted joints and bolted joints. Okay, this one also example of a civil structure. Okay, here this one also a example of a civil structure. A screw thread is obtained by cutting a continuous helical groove on a cylindrical surface. The threaded portion engages with a corresponding threaded hole, internal thread forming a screwed fastener. Following are the terms that are associated with the screw threads. Okay. So this is the example for external thread. Okay, this one also example for external thread. And this one is the example for uh, internal thread. Okay. This one is the example for internal thread. Okay. Now, this is the diagram. 
this diagram is useful to identify the main terms main terms used in uh, design of uh, threads okay here this one is the here this one is major diameter this one is minor diameter major diameter also known as uh, nominal diameter this major diameter is the largest diameter of a screw thread touching the crest on an external thread or the roots of an internal thread okay and this one is the minor or core diameter of the thread okay minor or core diameter of the thread is the smallest diameter of a screw thread touching the uh, roots roots or core of an external thread or the crux of an internal thread pitch diameter uh, here from this diagram you can observe this one is the pitch diameter this is the axis okay this one is the pitch diameter this one is the minor diameter or core diameter this one is the major diameter okay pitch diameter is the diameter of an imaginary cylinder passing through the threads at the points where the thread width is equal to the space between the threads pitch the distance between uh, two successive threads okay the distance between two successive threads is called pitch pitch of the thread okay the distance between two successive threads are called pitch lead it is the distance a screw advances axially in one turn okay so that means the distance moved by the thread for one turn one turn okay flank here you can observe flank is the straight portion of the surface on either side of the screw thread okay this one is the flank this one also flank crest here you can observe this is the crest okay the crest is the peak edge peak edge of a screw thread that connects the adjacent flanks at the top okay root yeah this one is the root root is the bottom edge of the thread that connects the adjacent flanks at the bottom thread angle this one is the thread angle thread angle is the angle included between the flanks of the thread measured in an axial plane okay thread angle is the angle included angle included between the flanks of the thread measured in an axial plane okay these are the examples for uh, multi start threads a single start thread consists of a single continuous helical groove for which the lead is equal to the pitch as the depth of the thread depends on the pitch greater the lead desired greater will be the pitch and hence smaller will be the core diameter okay reduce the strength of the fastener to overcome this drawback multi start threads are recommended these are the examples for v threads these are the examples for square threads okay in multi star threads uh, lead may be increased by increasing the number of stars without increasing the pitch for a double star thread lead is equal to twice the pitch and for a triple star thread lead is equal to thrice the pitch okay in double star threads two threads are cut separately starting at points diametrically opposite to each other in triple start threads the starting points are 120 degrees apart on the circumference of the 
screws. Multi start threads are also used wherever quick action is desired, as in fountain pens, automobile starters, arbor press spindles, hydraulic wall spindles. This is a left hand thread, this is a right hand thread. Screw threads may be right hand or left hand depending on the direction of the helix, helix angle. A right hand thread, this one, a right hand thread is one which advances into the nut when turned in a clockwise direction. And a left hand thread is one which advances into the nut when turned in a counterclockwise, counterclockwise direction. Okay. Then abbreviation LH is used to indicate the left hand thread. Unless otherwise uh, stated, a thread should be considered as a right hand one. Okay, this figure illust illustrates uh, both the right hand and left hand thread, thread forms. External thread, internal thread, sorry, these two are the external threads, these two are the internal threads. And this one is the example for stud. Okay, stud. Now these are the convection representation of uh, external threads and internal threads. Okay, this is the convection representation of external thread. This is the example for a convection representation of internal screw thread. Forms of threads. Bureau of Indian Standards BIS adopts ISO metric threads, which are adapted by a number of uh, countries apart from India. The design profiles of external and internal threads are shown in figure. The following are the relations between the various parameters marked in the figure. Okay, here you can observe P is the pitch, H is the height of the thread, thread profile, capital D is the measure diameter, small d is the core diameter. Okay. Yeah, this is the thread profile. There are different types of thread profiles. I will explain one by one. So these are the different types of thread profiles. First one is a uh, sharp V thread. The second one is a whipboard thread. Third one is a butter thread. Fourth one is a square thread. Fifth one is acme thread. And the sixth one is warm thread. These are the important types of thread profiles in our subject point of view. Okay. Sharp V thread. In this in this slide, I will explain how to draw sharp V thread. First of all, you have to draw a horizontal line. After that, you have to consider a height H. H equals 0 0.87 into P. P is the pitch of the thread. Okay. Now, now consider a another horizontal line. Okay. Now take a point. Okay. Now Take another point. The distance between two points is pitch P equal to let uh, 30 or 40, 60. Okay. Now join all these points to get the sharp V thread. Okay. So this is the form of a sharp V thread. Okay. Now British standard Whitworth thread. Whitworth thread threaded form is adopted in Britain in inch units. The profile has rounded ends, making it less liable to damage than shock V thread.
Now this is the shape of a British uh, standard with both thread. Okay. Now this is a square thread. Square thread is an ideal thread form for a power transmission. In this, as the thread flank is at right angles to the axis, the normal force between the threads acts parallel to the axis with zero radial component. This enables the nut to transmit very high pressure as in the case of a screw jock and other similar applications. Okay, this is the shape of a square thread. Okay, here the height and the width of each thread is equal to 0 0.5 P. Okay. Height equal to half of the pitch and uh, width of uh, each thread also equal to half of the pitch. Okay. The distance between two successive threads is called pitch. Okay. Pitch P. Now, the next one is Acme thread. Acme thread is a modified form of a square thread. It is much stronger than square threaded because of the wider base and it is easy to cut. The inclined sides of the thread facilitates quick and easy engagement and disengagement. As for example, the split knot with the lead screw of a lathe. Okay, this is the final shape of a Acme thread. Okay, this is the modified shape of a square thread. Okay, this Acme thread is much stronger than square thread. Next one is the warm thread. Warm thread is similar to the Acme thread, but is deeper. It is used on shafts to carry power to warm wheels. Okay, the design is same, but this warm thread having high depth. Okay, here the depth is very high as compared to before Acme thread. Next one is the buttress thread. Okay. Buttress thread is a combination of V and square threads. It exhibits the advantages of a square thread, like, like the ability to transmit power and low frictional resistance. With the strength of the V thread, it is used where power transmission takes place in one direction only, such as, such as a screw press, quick acting uh, carpenter's wise. Okay bench vices like this now this is the shape of a butter thread Now this is a external thread. This one is a internal thread. Okay, this figure shows the true projection of a screw thread, whereas the conventional representation of external and internal threads as recommended by BIS shown in figure. This is the orthographic projections of a hexagonal nut.
Okay, this is the or the this is a top view, front view, and side view of a hexagonal nut. Okay, this is the isometric view of a hexagonal nut. Now this is the hexagonal headed bolt. Orthographic projections of a hexagonal headed bolt. Okay, this is a head, hexagonal head. This one is a shank or body. Now this is the example for a square nut. Now this is the example for square headed bolt. Okay, this is a square head, this is a body or shank. This one is a side view. Okay, this is the orthographic projections of a square bolt. Now I am sure I will show you assembled view of a hexagonal headed board with a nut and a washer. This is a washer, this one is a bolt and uh, this one is a nut. Okay, this one is a nut, this one is a washer, this one is a body or shank, this one is a head. Okay, this is the assembled view of a hexagonal headed bolt with the washer and nut. Okay. This is the example of a orthographic projections of a hexagonal nut. Okay, these are the isometric views of a hexagonal nut. These are the other types of uh, bolts and nuts. Square headed bolt with a square neck. This one is the example for T headed bolt with a square neck. And this one is the example for a hook bolt. Now, this is the example for eye bolt. This is the example for a stud, stud or stud bolt. This is the conventional representation of a stud, stud. This is the original shape of a stud. This one is the conventional representation of a stud. So this is the application of a stud. Now oh, this is the example for a flange nut. This is the example for cap nut. This is the example for a dome nut. This is the example for capstan nut. 
now this is the example for ring nut ring ring nut now this is the example for wing nut these all are the different types of set screws okay set screws and grub screws set screw ends Okay, these all are the different types of mission and cap screws, mission screws and cap screws. Okay, hexagonal headed screw. This one is a flat head screw. This one is a round head screw. Here you can observe. Okay, this one is a cheese head screw. Okay. This one is a vowel head screw. This one is a socket head, socket head screw. This one is the example for a lock nut. This one is the example for castle nut. This one is the example for locking, locking with a split pin. This one is the example for uh, eye foundation bolt and this one is the example for a bent foundation bolt. Okay. Okay, thank you.